Hello everyone. Thank you for being a part of our 30th virtual Women Oak Test Bangalore chapter. Freedom for Women Oak Test Bangalore. So I'll be your host for the day and I work with uh, Trijan. Talking about Women Oak Test is an initiative to improve the diversity in the testing and the tech world. So it improves to equip the testers in the power of knowledge. Talking about a word for Trident, which hosts this uh, webinar. So Trident is a 25-year-old tech company that enables uh, business to embrace their digital future. It helps clients to overcome their limits by leveraging the technology. So we here uh, we are uh, happy to share that Trident recently won the best agile project for the prestigious North American Software Testing Awards 2020. Talking about our uh, webinar topic for the day. So today we have two distinguished experts joining their uh, hands to help us to embrace our uh, journey of uh, building your personal brand. So our speakers for today is uh, Kartik Srinivasan and uh, Shreya Krishna, who are among the leading uh, lights on the subject and offering consultancy workshops to companies and you know, to the business leaders. In this uh, fireside webinar, these experts will discuss how to identify, nurture, and uh, manage your uh, personal brand. This webinar will focus you on actionable points that will help you to sustain and grow as a brand new. So, hi, Kartik. Hi, Shreya. Hi, good afternoon. Hi. So, we welcome you to uh, Women Who Test community. So, without any further ado, I'll let you guys to take over the webinar. Thank you, thank you so much. Okay, so Karthik, uh, this is my, um, I think second in public conversation with you, but many uh, other conversations that have happened both online and offline. And every time I speak to you, I'm very, um, you know, I'm fascinated by multiple things, okay? Uh, I'm fascinated by the, by the commitment with which you share and the authenticity with which you share and, um, I've realized, we'll come to the brand conversation, but I've realized, I think what's very, um, what's very enduring, for lack of a better word, in terms of what you share is, is your perspectives are so, um, you know, so well put out into the world that you often tend to, and I've commented several times, you often tend to think, uh, you know, logically, parallelly, it's like multiple sections are building for your perspective as someone reads what you share. And I think uh, kudos to that and thank you for sharing. Um, it's it's incredible to be able to read that kind of thought process. And uh, I really appreciate, I get very distracted by intelligence. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, you know, every time, and of course I've read the book, um, Be Social, which is uh, building brand new, which, which talks about personal branding in the social world and that's what we're going to speak about today so my first question actually after all that commentary is um, on when did you start the journey personally for yourself and you never did it I know you didn't do it consciously you just started sharing and it it led to the journey that came later so if you can share with our audience a little bit about your own personal journey of uh, when you decided to go and write and share on a regular basis and what that did for you so if you can tell us a little bit about that Absolutely. Um, if I were to pinpoint a specific time period, it would be the early days of Twitter in India. I joined slightly later than most people. It was probably 2008 end or 2009 end. And I, I hadn't joined the earlier social media platforms, which are very popular at the time, like Orkut, MySpace, which were happening at the time. And Facebook yeah. was limited to the college dorms at the time. Outsiders like us won't get access to it at all. LinkedIn was the original professional platform which launched back in 2002 and then we were all in it by default because everybody yeah. said it's like online CVR everybody has to be there okay, okay fine we did it but Twitter was the first time I realized that every one of us could have a voice if you think about it in that way but at the time everybody was sharing things like my dog ate this for breakfast I I actually went for a morning run and here is a nice flower that I took a photo of. All those stuff were very common on Twitter. I mean, even now it's quite common. Now it's more to Instagram now. Not on yeah. But this is what everybody seemed to be generally sharing. And very harmless, frivolous, vacuous stuff everybody was sharing. So I thought, is that the only way to use this powerful platform where any individual can have the global audience attention 
if she or he wishes to from that point if to think like that as against thinking saying i'm going to share what i have for breakfast so even my first tweet i was posting something that i thought would be useful to a reader instead of just saying that i'm sharing a slice of my life kind of stuff so i was always been thinking about is there a way that i can be purposeful to an audience so that they think of me when i talk about particular topics they think i mean if i think if, I, if they think of x as a topic they think of me as a brand i mean that's what branding is literally you are trying to i mean for instance if i ask you saying who's the most outrageously dressed bollywood actor right now everybody would close their eyes and one second they say ranveer singh because yeah. he has branded himself so well with outrageous clothing you can't even think of anybody else when it comes to outrageous clothing it's that well branded and there is probably some sense in why he is doing it he is trying yeah. to fit within a kind of non fitable space that brands can look saying this guy can fit in i mean i mean like my brand as a brand ambassador and every brand thinks like that saying he's he's so out there he's not conventional and he seems good for my brand and no wonder he's probably the one actor with maximum brand appeal and i mean i mean like during the gully boy release he was oh, yeah. he was he was endorsing about 25 plus brands in the same costume literally the gully boy costume that's so amusing there but it has worked very well for him so that's the branding part that's when i decided or thought consciously saying okay there is a hugely powerful thing going on here because our voice can be heard by millions of people potentially i mean if not millions at least few hundreds can listen to them so let's make something useful out of it instead of just wasting that potential that's probably the starting point it started with twitter actually I, I, i'm still in love with twitter but it's a cesspool i understand that fully it's a war zone and yeah. i'm i'm so i'm slightly more constricted towards linkedin now because it's much more purposeful in terms of the conversation that happen but i'm just stretched between twitter and linkedin as platforms i mean i know personally that you'd love instagram you are a superstar on instagram and i am a complete novice on instagram but that's how it works yeah i mean uh, i agree with you i think there's always <clears throat> you need to figure out what works for you and what do you stand for uh, but you're so right the platform is there for everybody what do you make of the platform you know what are you going to add to it a value which is something that you are creating for the people who are reading it is it really worthwhile who is your audience um are you putting thought into it and and you're so right all you need is to figure out what platform works for you and at what form and manner and leverage that because i love reading your i love reading your tweets of course but i'll go back to linkedin to read your longer form pieces because i love Uh, long form content especially when it's written in such an articulate uh, sort of a manner and uh, you know twitter for me is that it, it restricts you with the number of characters so i'm like i want yeah. more you know so twitter for me is that i'm like i want more so let me go back and read uh, read this uh, in in long form um but having said that i like how you've leveraged both the platforms uh in actually being able to share the narratives that you want to share in the form and manner and you have diverse audiences on both places like there are some of us who follow you in both places and consume your content in both places but interestingly enough i'm sure they're very very vastly different when it comes to the larger a uh, lot of readers who are reading uh, your pieces so uh, when you wrote be social and you know i'm going to come to the book now because the book is entirely about the topic we're speaking today uh, one is why did you on at the outset start writing the book and of course for everybody who's listening who wants this one hour to actually lead to something be social is the right place to start so make sure it's available on amazon make sure to pick up the book uh, kartik wrote it a couple of years ago um you know we yeah we did we did the launch as well so tell us a little bit about why you wrote the book what's in the book for the readers and how is the process of you know actually going through uh, getting that out Uh, so the book's objective was very simple because everybody when they thought about social media they thought about influencers and the influencer model is very different it's almost like um uh, you you just amassing an audience online and you put a number to it saying i have got x million audiences or x thousand number audiences and then you try to monetize that audience in terms of a brand content or brand engagement it is exactly like mainstream advertising you go to the maximum number of readers in terms of newspaper you go to the most viewed television channel or most visited online website and then you advertise there that's the model um 
I don't think that's for everybody. That's for a few people who want to become actors, influencers, journalists, power superstars, and all that stuff. That's the, that's a very different model altogether. I was looking at it from a common man, common woman perspective. If you want to think, I mean, if you start thinking, saying, on an average, I spend about one to two hours every day across the day on multiple social media platforms, whether it's LinkedIn, Facebook, WhatsApp, Twitter, Instagram, you name it. And there are so many nights like Who now, and there is Rokoso, and so many now. If I'm spending two hours, is there a way that I can spend it slightly more purposefully for my life instead of thinking at the end of the day while I'm sleeping and still scrolling, saying, why have I wasted two hours on all these platforms and what have I gained from them? I have gained misinformation, anger, arguments, conversation, debate. All this is what I'm gaining. Is there something more better I can gain? Because I'm spending two hours a day, which is a lot. I mean, that's what the average yeah. says. Indians spend about two and a half hours a day across the day on multiple sources because we just obsessed with it i mean the, the point is we all have opinions and indians are unique that we have multiple <laughs> opinions on the same subject at the same time we are quite interesting that way so the book was an objective to help people think saying there is something tangible you can gain from the time that you spend on social media platforms it is not all waste if you think about it that way and this is not an influencer product it is just better utilization of our time on something that is so important to all of us because we think it's important. And is there a way to do that at all? So the book doesn't help you become an influencer and start monetizing your tweets or monetizing your Instagram. The book just helps you saying, okay, I'm on LinkedIn. Okay, I'm on Facebook. Yeah, of course I have an account, I have I'm on Twitter. Uh, can I get something out of it? They seem to be getting everything. I mean, all the platforms are getting so much data from us day in and day out. What do I get? And should I just give my data freely to them? I mean, I need to get something out of it. The book is the answer to that. Get this stuff and you can get something. I mean, I'm living proof here. There are many more people who are here. They can get something tangible out of it. And personal branding is an output that you get with which you get better outcome in the long run. That's the interface. Yeah, so I, I'll come to personal branding now. A lot of people misconstrue it, like you said, becoming this influencer or, you know, uh, or some people are shy. They're like, no, I don't want to brand myself, you know, or some people are like, uh, I don't have the time or the energy to really brand myself. So uh, the number of people I speak to, there's also a misconception of, of being becoming a brand, uh, you know, but let's demystify that myth. And I'll ask you to speak a little bit about personal branding itself. And why is it important? Uh, because a lot of people don't get like, no, I have a LinkedIn profile. That's enough. You know, people want to find me, they'll find me. You know, so that's the approach. Or a lot of people don't even know why it's important to actually put a sort of a footprint of yourself. So tell us a little bit about that. So we all have brand whether we are working or not. That's the most, the first thing that people need to get demystified about. For instance, when we were in school, um, if you are a good cricket player in the team, you are branded as that person who plays cricket well and lives in that road and his father works there. That's your brand, basically. That's your image. That's your perception based on who you are, quite literally. If you are a good singer, but very shy, and then people will say that he sings very well, but he's also very shy. He doesn't speak much in class. That's how we are branded. And that's basically the way we are people perceive us and then tell others saying, ah, Patrick, I know he sings very well, but he's very shy in the class. That's a branding basically. So you have not worked towards it consciously, but people take away that because you are living with them day in and day out. You are meeting them day in and day out and they think this is who you are. You could be 10 more things. They don't know that. Only people who live with you, who spend 24 hours with you, like your parents, your brother, sisters, or spouse right now, they know you inside out, hollow in completely. But Rest of the world would just form perceptions based on the amount of time that you spent with them. So the first thing that people need to understand is everybody has a brand, whether it's good, bad, you have a brand, just ask your wife or your husband or your neighbors, they will tell you who they think you are. That's your brand quite literally. The second point is that this is something that you just lived and people formed an opinion. How about you actively take control of your brand so that you can put conscious things in people's mind? Now, this leads to an obvious question. People think saying, are you asking me to fake my brand? 
I can't do that. I'm not an actor like that. I'm just who I am, and my wife can think of me any way. But I don't want to fake my brand. But this is not faking at all. This is almost like, for instance, if you're trying to make a presentation in a company and you are in a conference room, there are ten people seated with you. You stand up, and then there is a PPT going on below, and then you start speaking. You don't speak like the way you speak to your next door person or a person that you're sitting at a coffee shop. You don't speak like that. You throw your voice. You stand more erect because you're aware that ten people's eyes are on you, and then there is a spotlight, imaginary spotlight on you, and then you talk with slightly more authority because you are presenting to an audience. You are not just talking to a neighbor and then just ch chatting kind of stuff. Is that acting? Not acting. It's just you. But you know that the surrounding is different, and you need to. Pitch yourself to that surrounding in a different way. You don't just mumble like you're mumbling with somebody. Uh, I mean, like during a friendly chat, you talk differently, and that's not acting at all. That's still you, but you are just hyper aware of your situation and surrounding, and then you appropriately change your face. Now, when I say change your face, again, people go saying, "I can't change my face. I have only one face." But we all change our faces. When you go to an office, you put on a professional face. When you're playing with your friends in the evening, you are very casual kind of face. When you're playing with your kids, you got a very kiddish, childish kind of face. And you I, plus when you're with your pets, just imagine how you behave with your pets. It's a totally yeah. different face. I mean, are you very professional with your pet? Of course not, because you know who the audience is, and then you change accordingly. That's not acting. That's just you. You're just hyper aware of what situation you are in, and you behave appropriately. This obviously leads to a question many people are saying: If I am on Twitter, what is my face? And people say that I have no clue who the audience is. So what face should I put? What mask should I put? And that's when you need to work backwards. You are not. I mean, you can't gauge what your exact audience is on Twitter or Instagram or Link. At least LinkedIn, you can think it's a professional audience and you can behave accordingly. But any other platform, it's not professional personal. It's anything for anybody. So then you need to work backwards and think about it, saying which face should I put so that I can attract the right audiences towards a particular outcome, and then you think about it like that. So Instagram, for instance, many of the CEOs that I know that I follow on Instagram, they don't talk business at all. They don't talk professional stuff at all. They talk about photography, running, hobbies, insects, yeah. bird watching, those kind of stuff. And when I see them on Twitter or uh, LinkedIn, they're totally different. But on Instagram, that's their personal thing. I mean, their family time, their kids' time, their 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 biking, cycling, weekend outing, all that stuff. A different face come together, which means on Instagram they have consciously chosen to project one part of their life, which they don't do it on any other platform. And yeah. if I'm following them only on Instagram, my whole perception about them would be saying. He is he is very enthusiastic about photography. That's the only thing that I can think of. Nothing else because that's what he showcases. It's that's literally what it is about. I mean, you choose the face based on the kind of outcome that you want, which is audience should think of you in a particular way, and then you do it repeatedly again and again like a habit, and it becomes your second nature. Initially, you would think I can't do this for more than once or two months. But then you just imbibe that as a habit, regular habit, like a newspaper habit kind of stuff, and then you just go on with that. That really helps you set the tone, and people form perceptions. And these brand is something that you can control, and it's not just happening by chance. Everybody has a brand. You just take control of your brand when you think about it consciously. Yeah, I agree actually because. um you're right about owning your voice because you you have it like it or not you have it if you have a linkedin profile you're there people can see what you are then they'll connect the dots and now it's become so much more of a virtual world with everybody spending so much time i'm sure that two hours is a lot more the after the pandemic yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now it's literally become that right and so having said that uh, which This obviously speaks about then the need to sort of own your space, your voice, and your brand. Where do people start? Because the starting point, apparently, for a lot of people, many conversations I've had, is a big, big question mark because they don't know where to start. And I keep joking, saying you've already started. It's not about starting. Just like you said, it's already there. Now just invest into it. So tell us a little bit about where do people start, or their perceived start has to happen somewhere. So where does that happen? Yeah. Yeah. So when people stumble upon the phrase personal branding, most people think it means talking about yourself. Yeah. 
and then many people are very queasy about this whole thing. Say, I can't talk about myself. Others should say things about me. How can I say something? And because we've been imbibed right from childbirth saying, it says in Gita, do your duty and don't expect rewards. Others should talk about you. And we have all grown up with that completely. And so that yeah. when somebody says personal branding equal to talking about yourself, everybody gets very uncomfortable saying, oh, I can't do that. That's very odd. Others should talk about me. See, I need to earn the praise of others. I can't talk about myself. Unfortunately, that's not true. Personal branding is not talking about yourself. Personal branding is just putting forward your point of view on any topic that is relevant to you and that you can have a point of view about. I mean, if, if you ask me to say something about what's happening in Afghanistan, I have no clue. I'm just a news consumer. I have not formed opinions or perspectives about that at all because it doesn't affect my immediate world. And I'm actually quite privileged that it, it doesn't affect yeah. me. Maybe there are parts sure. of people who are completely not this privileged at all. But thankfully, I can afford not to spend time on thinking about it to form a point of view. There are other things that I can afford to think about. So there are many things I have no clue about. I'm just reading. I just, it just goes from here to here. That's it. I move on. I'm just an awareness level. I'm reading about them. But there are many other things that I consciously go towards. I think about it. I try to question myself. And then I try to look at all perspectives and then form an opinion saying, this is what I believe in with regard to this topic. So the point of starting point, I mean, the starting point for anybody is to first understand personal branding is not talking about yourself. It's about talking those things with which others can form an opinion about you. And that those things is something that you need to define. I literally say that the starting point is a definition. So start with, what do you want people to think about you as? So for instance, if you're coding, you could say, it's obvious, coding is my job, that's my professional identity, and I work in a company, I do coding, or I do testing, whichever it is. I want to be known as a very good testing professional which is an obvious thing because you work in testing, which is perfectly fine. But if you talk about testing 24 hours, your audience will be very, very, very narrow because the world is beyond testing, world is beyond coding, the world is a lot of things. So you need to expand your potential brand definition, that is your personal definition into something else that can also join testing. It's not 24 hour testing, but something else. For instance, if you know a CEO, and the CEO, she talks only about her company all through the day, basically on Twitter, LinkedIn. You would think she's a brand brochure. She thinks yeah. only about her company, nothing else. She doesn't have a life beyond that at all. Similarly, if you talk about testing all through the day, all platforms, people will think you don't have a life beyond testing at all. This is what you do and it's quite boring. Unless you happen to be a tester also, the audience happens to be a tester. So the kind of people you can attract as an audience is fairly limited. It's like a funnel, basically. You start speaking about testing and only the bottom end of the funnel who's very interested in testing, they follow you, which is not bad at all. It's perfectly fine. But it is very narrow in terms of an audience that you're trying to build. So obviously, when it comes to audience, the bigger, the better is generally the thing, but it need not be millions. So the point is, when you're trying to define yourself, look at who you are as an individual and not just who you are as an employee or just don't look at your income earning capability alone. Look at who you are as a person. Basically. So then you would start looking at it in a more realistic way saying, okay, I am this individual. I am into testing. That's number one. I am very passionate about women's rights and the bias that comes with gender. I'm passionate about the topic. I'm interested in the topic. So you think about that. I'm interested in gardening. I'm interested in children's education. I'm interested in this, this, that, etc. Then you would make a laundry list of quite a thing. We are all human. We have interest in multiple things. But if you have 200 things, prioritize it down to say about five or six things, which are the large level stuff, and then put that as your brand definition saying X, this is me. The brand stands for one, two, three, four, five, six. These are the stuff that I need to stand for. When you have the definition, then before you share anything anywhere, whether it's on LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, anywhere, you just need to look at your definition. Okay, I'm planning to say something about this topic. Is it fitting into my six at all? If it doesn't, question why am i wasting my time and why am i wasting my audience time if it is let me read up more let me just question myself more let me analyze this more let me form better opinions and then articulate it well and then put it across so that it's both useful to me and to an audience that's how it comes to now you could argue saying does this mean that i can't share impulsive stuff on social media at all of course not it's your social media you can share anything you want completely but the point is make it purposeful to both your audience and to yourself 
you can still share the photo of a dosa that you are eating there's absolutely no problem at all it's totally harmless but do less of that and more of the purposeful one so that it benefits you in some ways absolutely i agree because you know when you look at the ecosystem of a person you you're not none of us are unidimensional uh, you know so, and and i love like i'll take a parallel from the pieces that you write right you take music and then you connect that to leadership and then you connect it to thought leadership and then you connect it to advertising so you what you've done is beautifully linked your interest your you know thinking your work all of that into a piece which is so relevant and so again like i said beautiful to read because you're not unidimensionally talking about something you're drawing inferences you're and and this is where i keep telling people the trick to actual social media consumption is consume less contribute more you know you need to consume a little bit from spaces that yes. you want to consume from but there's a lot yeah. of riff raff out there so cut yeah. out the riff raff and consume from spaces that add value to you same as purposeful sharing purposeful consumption so you know because unless you if like you said there's so much fake news so much propaganda so so until you cut out the fat you're not going to get to the lean mean space of actually being able to share what you want to share because you're consuming often times a lot of negativity and a lot of you know so that's the flip side right and like the greatest strength is the greatest weakness also because social media has so much access but you have control over just like what you share what you consume so cut out the negativity because so many people say that oh it's so negative or oh, people are showing off all the time no they aren't that's your perspective <laughs> exactly so, you know, for them it's very useful in fact i have a very nice parallel that people can understand easily your personal branding efforts is exactly like your health health is a combination of what goes in and what goes out if you eat right and you burn it right that is a balance of health similarly you read right and not read more read less read right to consume right so that you are able to express appropriately share appropriately if one goes for a toss the other one also goes for a toss it's a balance constantly yes there is more than ever to read and consume right now but you need to filter it and funnel it down to what is most important for you read that more often and just cut out all the refrap so that you are not wasting time consuming you are not wasting time sharing and it just happens whenever the time is right it just happens and you move on and do other things also but that's how the health example is the best example actually yeah that's that's amazing what goes in and what comes out it, i think that's a great one it's 12:30 i'm conscious of time uh, kartik and i can go on chatting i think about this for hours together if we are allowed to because we've done that but i will ask our audience we have quite a few people attending to start posing questions i'm just going to open up the questions tab here and i'm also going to ask ah there are questions already so there are um Okay so basically this is a question for the team we are asking is this going to be streamed on youtube because somebody wants to send it to their friends <laughs> you know but um, i'm going to ask the audience to post questions uh, while i continue to chat with kartik i'm going to also open up my window so i'm going to ask the team to send me the questions as they get posted yes okay So uh Karthi next my next question is is uh, obviously in terms of the fact that uh, how do you pick the social media platform that is meant for you because a lot of times people make the mistake of spreading themselves too thin or putting the same content on all the pages now that's also you know it's okay sometimes if it's if it's something that's common but a lot of people have this thing of sharing the same thing on all the platforms um so if you can speak a little bit about that about platforms and how do you leverage platforms for you yeah uh so there is no thumb rule saying this platform is better that platform is better what works for you is what works for you quite literally that's depending on the objective um i personally i am a text based person i am more of a words person i'm not an image person or a video person at all i think of myself as a words because every time i see things around words form into my head and i want to articulate them i want to write better that i mean it's quite outdated i know these days in the world of video and tiktok but that that's who we are basically so i'm a words person so for the longest time i didn't take to instagram at all because i thought i'm forced to share an image every time and the words is incidental i don't want to do anything at all 
but i then thought saying okay there is a lot of there is lot of interest on instagram and the kind of numbers instagram is is unbelievable and i'm probably missing out on something so let me use it in a way that it works for me i actually put so much text on instagram rarely images and images are incidental to me text is more important to me there is no way of sharing links in non story post basically but i still share links i just don't care if it useful to you useful to you and it has worked for me surprisingly well one of the workshops that i got from a very large company the ceo after we i did the workshop she asked me saying do you know how i reached out to you I thought pias somebody would have referred my name and you would have got through me no my daughter who's 16 she follows you on instagram and she said that if you're thinking of a workshop on personal branding you should be the one to do it i had no clue that she follows me and she told her mother who is a ceo of that company this is how things can work and i'm i thought i am a novice on instagram and look it has worked and all that's what matters so platform is immaterial my famous example is anand mahindra his chosen platform is only twitter he doesn't care about linkedin he can afford not to care about linkedin of course but he doesn't care about facebook he doesn't care about linkedin no other instagram he doesn't care at all but on the other hand ratan tata look at him on instagram he is a star on instagram and he uses it so brilliantly i mean you can't expect ratan tata at his age to be a superstar on instagram but he is there really? and he's fantastic the content is really interesting he talks a lot about dogs and his passion for life so many things and he's very interesting on instagram he doesn't talk business at all or rarely talks business so yeah. it's how do you use the platform on the other point that you are saying same content on all platforms don't care just put it because you never know who wants to consume you on which platform but just be cognizant about platform centric nuances one of my favorite yes. example is by deepika padukone where she put the same content on twitter linkedin instagram facebook but there is a difference of how people consume content on on instagram people see the video first because that's what plays first by default and then if needed read the text on twitter people read the text first and then if needed see the video most of them don't even see the video they just text yeah. and then if the text is interesting leading to the video then they see the video facebook exactly same text first and then see the video facebook linkedin exactly same so when she had actually posted something about world mental health day and something she did she had a lot of outrage on twitter and facebook because people didn't see the video and saw only the text and it said you are just exploiting this day but on instagram zero outrage because people saw the video where she had explained everything thread there and the text is immediate so be cognizant about how people consume content on which kind because for instance when i'm trying to write something on linkedin i just have a go i just write 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 because yeah. i know linkedin is a platform now now you got 3000 characters also so you got lot of leeway to write about it but on twitter i know it's it's hyper short so i end, end up generally making a thread but even the thread it won't be a full long piece in thread i edit out heavily and then still put the thread completely same with instagram so the platform is immaterial use any platform that you want and one should be an anchor platform for you for me linkedin is anchor platform everything else is like a surrounding world kind of stuff it could be different for you insta would be the anchor platform and everything else surrounding don't bother about people thinking in their head saying you are putting the same thing everywhere you are repeating your content just don't bother just do whatever you want because nobody is paying you to do all this it's your own personal brand you are paying with your time so please make it useful and fruitful to you guys it makes sense actually you're right because um you never know from where what happens because instagram somebody finds you on instagram then they find your linkedin profile then like an academy reached out to me because somebody followed me on instagram then they went into my linkedin and found okay. me through linkedin and wrote to me on linkedin so you know you never know how they talk to each other and 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 a lot of times it doesn't matter really if they know yeah. that you're somebody who is who has a point of view in something and you're a subject matter expert in something else like my point of view is feminism and women and empowerment and environment and all of that but my work is mainstream marketing and and you know correct correct but, totally different yeah yeah totally but it's different but you it's just you yeah yeah it's all me so so that's that's the joy of personal branding because like kartik brings his music and so you bring your full self into this space that you are 
and i think that's i, what I probably need to in, interject you because more, because most people get worried saying you bring your full self actually you don't get your full self at all i have this famous example that i keep giving saying imagine you live in a house with 100 windows now yeah. you open only six windows for the world to see you through those windows can people see you if all 100 windows are open that means you are living your life 24 bar 7 on a live video stream yeah. which most of you don't do it at all yeah. so the only people who can know what's happening behind the windows are people who live with us my wife my kids my yes. family my peers who are there they can see it my neighbors can still see say about 10 20 windows because i live in that apartment they can see more but outside world i choose to open only five windows through that people form an opinion so you don't True. even need to bring your full self you just need to bring in your select self and you are not faking it it's still about you ah, you are yes. not trying to create something it is still you it's part of you you have 100 interest but you choose to highlight five interest those are the windows that you open so don't worry about bringing your full self because people argue all the same i am an introvert yaar how can i be on social media so okay. okay you are introvert for offline world to start a conversation with a stranger online nobody is possible to start a conversation with a stranger you push forward your thoughts on a select few topics by just being good at those topics one yeah. you are good at from an employment point of view rest based on passion interest hobbies perfectly fine just just read more on those topics and not make a pool of yours that's a good that's a great starting point actually sure. True. Actually, yeah. But then I'll change my line to saying, bring your authentic self because it shows. If you're not authentic, it shows very clearly, and also it shows when somebody is managing their own personal uh, spaces and when somebody else is managing it for them. It's a very obvious, uh, you know, thing that you can make out that it's not being personally managed. So yeah. So I agree with you. You can't ever bring your full self everywhere you go. Like you said, you do have those facets. But what you choose to share becomes relevant. But yes, with full authenticity. Okay, so now I'm gonna pause again and see if we have questions. Uh, uh, audience, you can start posting your questions. Um, I think there is one. There is one here from Shastri. Shastri, I think we already answered that. Oh yes, can I? Okay, guys, this window is a little bit small. Yeah, okay, so small. if I'm looking, yeah, yeah. if I'm looking, <laughs> squinting. Yeah. It's because I'm squinting. Okay, one second. There is somebody called. Yeah. Okay, I can see. Is am I getting the questions on WhatsApp? If I'm getting the questions, yes, perfect. Yes, I have it here. Okay, what if I think I do not have any unique skill or talent to distinguish myself from other peers? Yes, I get asked very, very often, which is perfectly fine. For instance, if you're just starting out in the world of employment, you just finish your college and you are an intern or an early stage in your career, early, early stage in your career, you are not an expert on anything. You don't know any topics at all that well. Perfectly fine. do you have passion and interest on some topics just showcase a passion for instance if you are a legal intern in a legal firm or if you are a testing intern in a tech firm testing could be your passion or it could be your interest area read more about testing read more about other testers showcase those examples saying i want to be like that person because i look up to that person in the world of testing what are the interesting testing uh examples that have happened that have led to something interesting is there anything interesting from that point of view all that works similarly if you are an amateur photographer with just a phone camera which is perfectly fine you just be at it trying to just do things better in terms of taking more photographs and go into one particular level instead of trying to take photographs of everything and anything around you go after one thing say bird photographs flower photography insect photography so that people mark you in there it's saying insect photography matlab this person i want to do that so you don't need to be an expert on anything to build your brand you just need to have passion consistently for a few topics that is good enough and the more you read the more passion you build and the more branding that you get yeah i agree and also a lot of times it's because we haven't really explored what we're really good at or what is that unique angle that we bring because we like learning. you said we're always told to be don't talk about yourself but you can think to yourself talk to yourself uh, to figure out what is that that you bring to the table and one thing is for sure all of us bring unique perspectives to the table because of our Absolutely. background 
none of us are the same so or every, unique. exactly everybody is unique you know, yes none of yeah, us are the same yeah none of us are the same so the next question is what if i'm not confident that my perspective is so unique as to be presented on a public platform i fear being ridiculed for an obvious take on a subject which is a very valid point most of the senior leaders worry about this a lot saying why bother saying something and getting burnt for it let me not say it let me say it with people i know offline you sort of trying to put it offline uh which is where framing and articulation comes into the play which is something that i spend a lot of time in my corporate workshops articulation is extremely important since yeah. we are in the communications world we understand the value of articulation marketing is all about articulation yeah. pr is all about articulation it's very very important but normal people who are away from the world of communication marketing they don't think much about it um it is simply like this for instance if you are trying to tell your father or mother that your marks are poor can you please please can you please still sign my card progress card how would you say it you would think you would prepare for it saying i would need to put a very sad face puppy face and i need to say if you sign this this time i will do it next time you plan for it right that is articulation in that case you know the audience you know you know the audience you are trying to impress and get something tangible out of them the parents you need the signature that's your outcome you're looking at but when you're trying to talk about some other topic you're just interested in you don't know the audience when you don't know the audience start with what do you want to say what is the outcome that you want people to take out of that say whatever it is two paragraphs you've written or a one minute video you've done what is the takeaway for your audience that you're thinking of write it down in one line first and then work your way towards articulating towards that one line if you don't have an outcome in your own head people won't get an outcome either because if you're just ranting endlessly without thinking consciously about it people won't get anything and people will assume that in multiple directions and pounds on you troll you and you will think okay all social media is bad but if you put effort say okay something happened here i have this point of view that is x as a point of view about whatever happened i want to express my thought on this topic i want my audience to get saying this person that is me thinks this about this topic and here are the reasons 1 2 3 4 5 it's a very analytical process it's not scientific it is still analytical process the only thing that you need to do is frame it from what you want the outcome to be and then it will work well even here i do one more additional step once i have articulated it i question myself like my worst cynic i will actually put myself in the shoe of my worst critic and cynic who will go on saying why are you saying what an idiot you are if you say this what about that i question everything myself it's like a chess move you actually think of at least four moves in advance i can't play chess for i mean chess to save my life but from a word perspective marketing perspective it helps me completely so you when you question yourself then you tone down many things that you have written in your articulation for instance if you're really angry and you just pour your heart out and then you question saying what if somebody asked me that question then i would probably tone down some of the words instead of saying that brand sucks i would say i'm just disappointed with the brand which won't evoke an extremely severe negative reaction in your audience basically so you need to think like that and and to be very honest not many people think this deep at all they just yeah. put whatever vomit whatever comes to their head they just put it on twitter facebook linkedin they just go on with it but you would actually experience it the more you put something bad and the more uh, comments you yeah. get or kind of the response you get the more you are aware how people perceive content you just need to be slightly more aware and the more you do that more you will craft your content better craft your narrative better it's a process it's a learning process people just are not born into it if you are in the communication space you have an undue advantage but if you are a tester yeah. you are a techie you're not a commun- you don't have that advantage but you can learn it's not yeah. impossible everybody can learn the only thing needed is you want to learn you need to have the quest for learning if you don't have that quest you will just keep on ranting and vomiting various stuff and people will troll you it's a waste of time absolutely yeah so i agree because uh, you know you if you put effort into anything especially reading i keep saying this right you want to be able to share and build perspectives you can't do it in a single layer there has to be many layers and those layers come only when you're reading and then you're you know getting yourself aware of even the outer outliers within the ecosystem you know so speaking of authenticity can i copy the personal branding efforts of a personality who i admire um uh, 
of course you can but copy the process and the technique and not the personality because that person's personality is totally different your personality is totally different even here i generally tend to say that the authenticity that you showcase on social media channels it is not 100% you you are 100% authentic with your parents with your spouse with your children because they see you day in and day out the real you in real life flesh and blood flesh and blood but online when people see you on twitter or thing it's not 100% authentic it's a fraction of who you are but it is still yeah. who you are you can't fake an interest suppose for instance if i'm not actively interested in cricket as a game i can't fake an interest it will show if i say wow what a fantastic match and i keep on going about it people will of course know that i'm interested in cricket but when they start asking me questions if i don't respond sensibly enough they will send saying this guy is just faking so it won't come it it will show basically people will see yeah. through that kind of facade actually so the authenticity on social media it's controlled carefully towards an objective but it is still part of you you are not being 100% authentic you are being 5% authentic or 10% authentic depending on which topic you are talking about so you can't fake topics and you have to have genuine interest in the topics that you're talking about. that's that's what it goes yeah i agree you can copy the process and the tech easily that's that's a fairly simple you can apply the same logic but yeah it's, you it's, can't. it's like your it's like your fingerprint it's unique <laughs> Okay, so someone wants to know if you have your book in audio book format. Uh, not yet. I am speaking to Westland and Amazon if they can do an audio version. I am not sure. They need to probably suggest a time and effort for me to record or somebody else to record. But yes, it will be useful because I am a huge audio book fan myself. I have stopped buying oh. printed books for the past maybe a decade. I consume books only on audio format now. So I just love the. Wow. Podcast. Okay. Oh wow, that's not something I've discovered yet. I still, and I'm not even upgrade. I have a Kindle, but I somehow, you know, like the weight of a book in my hand, the way it smells, and it's like a physical uh, relationship that I have with the books that I read. I understand, but you should probably give a try in Audible. Audible gives you a free month if you sign up. You get a free month. Audio book okay. is only format which truly lets you multitask because no uh, book reading session can be done or okay. needs to be done. on its own you can actually run you can walk you can cook you can wash you can do anything you can do gardening while listening to the book at the same so you, at the end of the session you would feel like you gained two things at the same time which is extremely valuable i mean in one hour you read 10 pages of a book that is you heard 10 pages of a book and you did some gardening wonderful amazing stuff okay so i'm going to try it for sure it's well worth the try how to handle a situation when your personal brand or people perceive you to be different than what you want them to be what you want them to be okay uh, personal brand is about yourself you need to first yeah. define what people should perceive you to be and so then if people think people people assume that suppose if i talk a lot about cricket and people assume that i'm interested in cricket i have given that sign consciously by talking a lot about cricket now if they cross question me to understand how much i'm interested in cricket and i'm just an amateur level cricket fan which is perfectly fine but if i'm trying to project myself as an expert and yeah. don't live up to it it will come crashing because there is clearly a mismatch between what you built as a perception and what you are living as an as a living proof as a reality so so you need to live up to it so for instance if those topics that you're only interested as a as a hobbyist or an amateur for instance photography i am an amateur photographer if you think of yourself don't try to showcase yourself as an expert photographer stay within the range of an amateur photographer because if you give out wrong signs people will take the wrong signs as you and then try to cross verify that and then they will think no this guy is faking something and there will be a mismatch so be very careful about what kind of perception that you want to build on the topics that you sell in out of the five topics or six topics maybe one or two could be i want to be an expert in the topic i want to be known as an expert on the topic but the other three could be i want to be just a hobbyist in this topic which is fine so you will articulate your content accordingly you won't go to the extent saying yeah yeah i know what i'm talking about you would just be a learner and you learn with people 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 share and you share everybody learns too yeah i agree um but i do understand also you know for me the interesting part is a lot of people see me on instagram and they meet me in real they all perceive me to be this angry person all the time you know 
<laughs> they are intimidated and they think I'm angry, but I'm not. People who know me outside of the platform are fine because they know me for who I am. But everybody else thinks I'm, you know, out to, you know, cut at people's throats and not. But it's an interesting perception that people build when they see one single side of what you share. Just because I, I don't. Have a suggestion it, for that. I have a suggestion for that, not yes. just for you, but for others yes. actually. Yeah. Be conscious about your larger digital footprint. I mean, it's it's yes. not just digital actually. Even offline, it works. For instance, if you're in a company or in a cl classroom or a college classroom, etc. If you're always very upset about things and you always complain about, rant about things, people will mark you or brand you as that yeah. person who always has a negative opinion about everything in life. So you need to mix and match. So you need to be conscious about your digital footprint and literally take stock saying what are my last 10 posts is yeah. all of them negative let me just break the monotony and put something light-hearted and positive are okay. you faking it no you're not faking it you're just trying to interject your own self and for instance if you are angry for 10 days with something you are i mean i mean i mean like i mean like your spouse or kids will be very upset with you saying papa why are you always angry why are you doing this and then you try to lighten the mood watch some fun movie and then you do yeah. that in real life same thing happens with your imaginary audience on social media platforms. Just be conscious about your footprint. If there is a stretch of negativity, break it down and put something lighthearted so that people don't <laughs> assume you're always angry. And it needs to be a conscious decision. You may be just doing yeah. it because that's what's happening in the world. I'm angry at everything yeah. in the world. But just take stock and take a step back and say something else so that people think, okay, he's not angry all the time. It yeah, helps. I know, right? So, so that, that happened recently to me. And I said, no, no, that's because... At that point, I was dealing with that online. I was just telling, calling people yeah. out. You know, I don't call people out normally. You know, I'm I'm a lot kinder and empath, you know, compassionate and empathetic. I'm not really angry over and waiting to burn the world down. <laughs> yeah, uh, people shift jobs across different functions. Say a person moves from engineering to sales, will his branding efforts as an engineer become wasted if he shifts to sales? Uh not necessarily i mean so branding obviously from an engineering point of view if you have built your i mean if you have built your own perception about others how should you think of saying he's a great engineer or she's a great engineer would obviously taper down but what people take away from it is not just engineering per se it's the individual behind that engineer so you can bring the same passion to a different field also um it's it i mean it's it's really not very different actually because you talk about gardening you talk about photography you talk about bird watching all three suppose if you drop one hobby because you're not able to indulge in that anymore and you pick up something else it's not as if people who liked you for bird watching won't won't follow you anymore for something else at all it's how much passion and interest and knowledge and shared learning that you bring to the topic that's what really matters. of course you will bring new audiences some of your older audiences who followed you only for one thing will drop off which is fine but you the individual are still the same what remains is the passion and genuine interest that you bring to a topic and if it's useful to people people will continue to follow you yeah. and for also, instance, one interesting ahead, example ahead. i mean i follow one journalist named i mean like sachin kalbag he is the editor of hindustan times in bombay yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, I follow him for a lot of things, very interesting things on politics and various other topics. But one topic he talks about, I have absolutely no clue. I mean, I feel like an alien when he talks. He's interested in sumo wrestling, Japanese sumo wrestling. And he's the only person I'm following who's interested in Japanese sumo wrestling. And every day towards the evening, he's watching some sumo wrestling match and he talks about sumo wrestling. I am a complete C. I have no clue what he's talking about. He's putting this photograph of huge people in their underwear and what is going on i don't understand this at all but i still follow him it's not yeah. that makes him who he is there is so much more to this is probably one percent of his overall interest graph there is 99 yeah. percent that i follow so i just persist with it i ignore the sumo wrestling part i move on to the other part anyway. so it happens for everybody yeah and and you know for from from what i think that when someone's going through a transition it's very human transition change are all human so, you know, if you can chronicle that journey, if you're switching, let's say, from engineering to sales, talk about the struggle, talk about the learnings, talk about the growth, uh, you know, talk about what's similar, talk about how being in engineering has helped you sell. You know, these are all things that can actually really Everything add matters. value yes. yeah, to yes. people who are, you know, going through the same thing. Yes. Now, it's, I'm going to switch into rapid fire mode. We have three minutes and a lot of questions. So, sure. do you plan to be in the podcast space? 
Um, no, actually, because I'm not a consumer of podcasts at all. Okay. Do I need to be a good writer to do personal branding efforts? Uh, it helps. Uh, and being a writer, you're, I mean, being a writer is not something that you're born into. It's a habit. It's a cultivated learning process and a habit like anything else in the world. I mean, it's like playing the sitar or tambura. It's the same thing. You need to learn. You need to be good at it. And there are so many books that you can start reading how to be a better writer. So you don't need to be one, but you need to get better at what you're doing. You can't just stay with wherever I am. I'll continue to do that. You need to learn it yeah. all. Okay, so I'm owner of a digital marketing agency. We have a good client base and our clients have also been funded with the help of our marketing efforts. We, however, are not able to utilize the success of our work. We want to brand the success stories, but don't want to sound as if we are bragging. As a founder, what should be a good way for me to do it? Talk about other campaigns that other companies have done, other agencies have done. This is something most agencies think is can't be touched at all. How can I have an opinion on some other campaign? But you can actually. Yeah. All you need to do is think without malice. Think from a point of what your perspective about the campaign is. Use words that are not negative extremes, and you can still criticize. You can say that it didn't work for me. It's perfectly fine. As some is saying, that campaign sucked, man, etc. Because that's a sweeping rejection of something that somebody has put a lot of effort in. So don't yeah. use that word. But have a point of view on campaigns of every other brand, every other agency, whichever attracts you, whichever. Yeah. Impresses you kind of stuff. You don't need to talk about your work at all. You can do that occasionally. If you're posting 10 things, one could be about your work. The rest of the nine, just with just broad wonder in your eyes, saying that was a great campaign. This didn't work for me. That was very interesting, but only half worked for me. Do that more often. You will get a lot more clients actually. Perfect. Okay. Excellent point on content on different forums. Would you have a different face on different platforms like professional for LinkedIn? Uh, in stuff of friends, etc. You can actually, you can. For instance, I don't talk about my interest on music or parenting or gardening, photography on LinkedIn at all. It is yeah. completely work related and my consulting related and those topics yeah. alone. Instagram, I have a go on any and every topic. Twitter, every topic. Facebook, every topic. So these are these are these are actually just invisible guidelines you put in your own head. You don't need to be like that. You can talk about any and every topic on LinkedIn. Nobody should stop you. My favorite example is um, is a RJ from Bombay. His name is Rishikesh Kannan. Very famous RJ from Bombay. He is very, very good on LinkedIn and he shares videos of his interviews with superstars and film stars videos. So people ask him saying, why the hell are you sharing all this? This is Facebook material. This is Insta material, Twitter material. Why are you sharing it on LinkedIn? He just simply said that on LinkedIn, when I share it, corporate people who are looking for hosts for their company events, they look for See me. I mean, like, what kind of host can I do? I mean, MC kind of stuff. And this is the place. LinkedIn is the place where they come with that mindset. They don't necessarily are in the same mindset on Facebook or on Instagram. Here they look at it. And when they see my video, they see that I'm spontaneous. I'm asking interesting questions on the ground. They think of me as a host and I get work from here. Brilliant. It worked for him. It worked for him. That's all matters. Absolutely. You know, for me, it was happenstance completely. I I was fairly active. I'm even now I'm fairly active on all my social platforms. But from a sharing point of view, the whole Instagram thing was very, I mean, it was not planned. It's not it just happened. It just, you know, it took the direction that it did. So it was it's not planned at all. Like most of the time continuing because of the schedules i lead it's mostly vomit it's literally like i write a piece every day <laughs> and my pictures are taken in 30 second time frames you know so everybody thinks i do a lot of this i'm like no it takes 30 seconds to a minute to Impressive. take it <laughs> correct, correct, correct. so it can happen you can just share and you can just be who you want to be and interestingly okay. enough i've cross-referenced also a lot of people on instagram have wanted to know about the work i do and you know, reached out, say, what nice. do you do? You know, will you tell us a little yeah. bit more? From and here had... to LinkedIn, from here to Twitter. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, it's it's interesting. The cross referencing is interesting. Okay, we have one minute extra, but then we have two questions. We'll finish this and we'll wrap. Uh, so glad to be part of this session. When do you start putting effort into personal branding? How and when would you start measuring the performance? To me, the numbers of followers and engagement stats cannot be the only attributes to measure. Absolutely. So how to check if it's creating a right face for the audience? So obviously it's a good question. Uh, the number of followers, number of comments, number of likes, RTs, they are not 
the thing because if you go by them you would try to game the whole ecosystem yeah. you think they that worked better from a likes rt perspective let me do more of that and then you will get pigeon hold into it so yeah. there you are going after content that can go viral number of people that what you looking at but what you yeah. need to look at say number of people you need to impress for instance my objective of being online is get more work for my consulting and workshops the number of people that i need to impress are the decision makers and companies who actually okay. take decisions for workshops and consulting that's the only audience that i'm looking at everybody else is an overflow it's probably a secondary tertiary kind of audience so it really helps from the point of view really helps. so i would strongly recommend that you look at impression of your content and not just the direct result in terms of replies or comments likes etc unfortunately only twitter and linkedin shows you impression facebook doesn't show you impression and instagram doesn't show you impressions but twitter and linkedin shows you impressions twitter is freely available linkedin under each post you see the impression that yes. is actually the universe of people who have bothered to consume your content out of that universe it could be 100 10 people have shown to show you visually or by through a method say i click like consciously i write a comment like this the 10 percent is almost like a conversion but the 100 is what really matters 100 people have consumed your content which is which is that's what you need to try to increase and not the visible ones actually yeah i agree completely uh, you know all of that is happenstance what are you sharing and who are you you know sort of cultivating in your audience and what is the conversation you're having is a lot more real than any number because that keeps changing algorithms keep changing and i keep joking exactly. about this instagram changes algorithm several times it keeps making you post i say i'm not buckling to that i i think i'm probably the only person who take i've taken month long breaks say it's okay and i've lost thousands of followers it doesn't matter, exactly. doesn't matter. Yeah. i want a break i'm not going to be pressured by a platform to put me into a spot you know they want money they want your attention so don't fall for it get what you want from them yeah exactly last question are there any legal complications in using social media for personal branding there is nothing unless you do the wrong things which are wrong not not necessarily from a social media perspective it's just wrong means wrong legally it's wrong which is obvious i mean if you if you try to abuse somebody somebody would take offense and probably go against yeah. you legally yeah. so don't abuse simple basically and and also to be like i'm very anti establishment and i call out the government all the time on my Same facebook here. and all of it so, so but again articulation is so important because i'm not abusing it it matters I'm sharing exactly. an words opinion. matter point out yeah. things in a rational logical way which is balanced it's not abusive which is not an extreme just point out yeah. things and people will still say yeah he is right but i but i don't agree with it which is fine yeah. i mean like That's agreements true. are fine but don't antagonize people by doing the wrong thing which is And, and what antagonizes people is also constantly changing because outrage is Absolutely. so common. I mean, if I say that I love idli, people can take yeah. up and so think, "How oh, dare you like idli, man? You need to like poha." Like, what are you doing? Did we lose Shreya or did we lose audience? I think we lost Shreya. Looks like we lost Shreya or uh, Karthik. No, it happens. It yeah, happens yeah, in the time so. of all digital. The whole family is on digital now, so <laughs> it will be quite a load on the Wi-Fi actually. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Okay. So by that question, Karthik, we end you know the Q and A uh, part of our uh, webinar where all the questions are answered. And thank you so much for that. And we have, you know, thank you more coming from the audience as well for all your answers. So yeah, that was a very insightful conversation uh, with both uh, Karthik and Shreya. And you know, one more important takeaway for me was that whether we are aware or not, we have all of uh, we have all of us have a brand. We have a brand. Yeah. Yes. So people are in the minds of people. For us. Yeah. 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 And the point of you know personal branding is just to take the control of how we uh, perceive you. It's within That's ourselves, yeah. Another significant lesson for me was that uh, to put up different faces based on the audience. Like I'm addressing, uh, to whom I'm like looking into now, yeah. 
this made some message uh, relevant to our uh, target audience as well. You know, they would also face the, uh, you know, it was the same uh, perspective maybe. So, yeah. This webinar, uh, you know, it, it was an important milestone for the journey of women who test. Uh, we discussed actually a different topic and uh, the subject experts like, you know, are our speakers for the day. So, you know, it, it was very glad for that. So, yeah, I, I thank you, Karthik and Shreya for sharing your experience and knowledge with our community. Um, I also thank the audience for their participation and, and you know, the questions were very interesting. Thank you so much for that. Thank you so much, Shruti. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Uh, I think uh, Shreya is not able to join. So, yeah. 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 So, yeah. Thank you, audience. Yeah. Thank you, Karthik. Thanks for your time. Bye. Yeah. Take care. Bye.